Welcome to the training video prepared by Precision Time for game officials to review the proper operation of the Precision Time system. We hope you will find this material to be beneficial. While for many of you this will be a review of things you have known for years, there is some important new information as schools transition to our latest PTS model, the PTS 900. The 2016-17 season will be a transition year as many schools have upgraded to our new PTS 900 system. This new system incorporates many new technologies and as a result has created significant changes in several protocols from our previous systems. If you are not sure which system model you are using in your game, you can simply look at the base station. Our previous models, which were the PTS-100 through PTS-750, all have a similar base station as shown on the left. These versions do not require a pregame calibration and are tuned to recognize only a stock Fox 40 Classic or Mini Whistle. It is important that if you are using one of our older systems that you only use the Fox 40 Classic. The base station for the new PTS 900 system is shown on the right and features a touchscreen as shown. The bulk of the remainder of this presentation will review the proper protocols including the whistle calibration for use of this new system. This slide gives an overview of the referee belt pack. Please note that the pack is virtually unchanged from any of our previous models. This is why if you are unsure which system you are using that you look at the base station for verification. We also wanted to review briefly that when placing the microphone in the clip in your lanyard that you make sure it is pointing towards the whistle. Please refrain from trying to turn on your belt pack yourself, especially with the classic pen cap or using your uh, ball needle to reach in and try to feel for that switch. It is very easily broken and we would rather not have you in that situation uh, that would require a belt pack to have to be sent in for service. This slide is to briefly review the recommended placement of the belt pack when worn. We are recommending that the pack be placed either in the square of your back or on your hip. The primary reason for discouraging the placement of the belt pack on your front side is that occasionally when reaching down to pick up the ball or tie your shoes, the start button can be inadvertently pressed with your leg, which then starts the clock, usually during a dead ball situation. We want to mention and stress that no college belt packs are designed to be used without using a precision time lanyard with the microphone clip. The belt packs that you may have seen used in the NBA by referees that do not use a lanyard are custom designed with a dual microphone and the microphone sensitivity is adjusted on those packs to compensate for the increased distance from the whistle. Therefore, you should always use the precision time lanyard when working a college game. For those officials using the new PTS 900 system, this slide covers some of the important highlights regarding the new calibration procedure. This calibration must be performed by each official before each game as to calibrate the assigned belt pack to that referee's whistle. The calibration consists of two whistle blasts, the first being the sample that will become the reference point for stopping the clock in game, and the second whistle which determines if the first whistle is a re reproducible sample. Each referee should blow the whistle the same as game conditions during this calibration. There shall be a one to two second pause between the two calibration whistles. 
we recommend that you have the microphone placed in your lanyard the same as game conditions. And I also want to method, mention that the old method of blowing a puff of air into the microphone to verify whether it's working or not no longer works with this new system. You need to do the calibration. This slide shows what's going on at the base station during the calibration process. When the operator selects the calibrate whistle icon, he shall direct you to do the calibration. Go ahead and blow the two whistles as I shall demonstrate. Once the second whistle is detected, you see here that a score is displayed, in this case a 97. This score measures the similarity or reproducibility of the two whistles. Note that I blew the whistles a bit longer than if I were calling a foul, but the longer whistle for the calibration gives us a better sample. These next couple of slides are to present information about the auditing capability of the PTS 900 system. Shown here is an example of a game file. Most schools will have the capability to import the, the clock data from their scoreboard, which will then generate a file that will include for every clock event who initiated the start and stop, the game time, shot clock time, and period. On the right hand side of the screen are the delta times between each clock event which I will expand on in the next slide. This slide is to illustrate how the game file can be used to correct a timing issue. The delta time which is displayed as the right hand column of the game file is the real time elapsed between each clock event. This can be especially useful if there is a clock issue such as an inadvertent clock stop during play. In this example I show a clock stoppage by the timekeeper at 1932 with a subsequent restart. If you note that the delta time for the restart was 3.04 seconds. Therefore, in this example, if a clock correction were required, we could use that 3.04 value to subtract that amount from the game clock um, very easily. We do understand that the current rules regarding the method for correcting timing errors may limit your use of this data at this time, but we wanted to make sure you were aware so that if you are able to use this at least for a verification of your initial evaluation of the situation, you have that uh, information available to you. This slide shows the listing of conferences and schools that have upgraded to our new PTS 900 system as of November 1st, 2016. We are still receiving some calls from schools wishing to upgrade to the PTS 900 this season. So we recommend that even though you may be at a school that you do not see on this list, that you verify which model of the system they are using. A couple of final thoughts. First of all, we ask you to please be patient if you are asked to repeat the calibration procedure. As we have pointed out, a calibration score of 93 or better has been determined to be the threshold to ensure consistent recognition of your whistle by the system during the game. If for some reason you have to change to a different whistle during the game, please ask to recalibrate your belt pack. Note that there are slight variations even between seemingly two identical whistles that this new system can distinguish between. And finally, have a safe season.
both on the court and in your travels. We look forward to seeing many of you over the course of this year. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions regarding the material covered in this presentation. Again, thank you for your cooperation and have a great season.